Hey, it's George Camark along with Pat Reader, the Hollywood Hi-Fi guys, and it would be really easy when we're talking about singing celebrities to do the Partridge Family. Yeah. Because after all, you had singing celebrities in you. You had Shirley Jones. Mm -hmm. She was a very good singing celebrity. David Cassidy, a budding yeah. singer who revealed himself to be quite talented. They had lots and lots of hits, too. But Everybody I'm not going to do the Partridge Family because they were just too doggone musical. That's right. Most of the people in the Partridge Family, however, were not all that musical. Oh, no. I know what you're thinking yes. of. You see, there were other people in the Partridge Family who basically just sort of mimed along the backing tracks. Yes, like that. See? And, um... Uh, one of those was the one who, for some reason, someone at the record company decided should have a solo career. They, they I know, I know the reason. They looked around and they said, "There's this guy, and he's he's lip syncing to other people's vocals, and he's miming to other people's bass playing. This guy needs to have a solo musical career because he's getting second to David Cassidy, the most fan mail in the whole series. Good enough reason for me. Absolutely. And so we have." The Danny Bonaduce album. Now this looks like something that was made up for for late night or Conan or no. or something like that. I mean it, this is an, this is an atrocious. It's autographed, you see, to George. I think I love you, Danny Bonaduce. <laughs> he was so embarrassed that, that I actually turned up with this album. He just re he really wanted to tear it to shreds. There yeah. there was a story about this album when this was issued when the show was in its run. Uh, it, it didn't sell. I mean I think I'm the only guy who bought one. Uh, probably some girls too. We're not going to get into that. Uh, but there was a story that a friend of mine who used to work at Rhino Records told me about this particular album and how they had boxes of these things they could not get rid of. Did you hear that story? Yeah, yeah I did. I heard that there, it was at the Rhino Records store. Uh, they said that they started, uh, what were they selling for a nickel, I think? No, was no it, they, they were selling them for a yeah, nickel. Well, that's what it started out. They started out selling them for a but, nickel. And that people wouldn't take them. And then they began, I think, giving them away free. For free. That was right. Like for Betty free. Davis. Mm hmm. And nobody would take them. Right. And then what happened, George? They put, they put a nickel on them. They actually like taped mm -hmm. a nickel to the, right. the jacket. So if you got the record, you got five cents as well just to get yeah. it out of the door. They would pay you a nickel to take it, but you couldn't bring <laughs> it back unless you returned <laughs> the nickel. So, so, and that's probably how most of those were shifted. We mm -hmm. need to, I don't even know where to go. There's so many wonderful songs on here. Uh, mm -hmm. Blueberry You, his, mm -hmm. his version of Turn Down Day, the circle hit. Yeah, there's lots of good um, stuff on here. You can, you can practically, Dreamland. you can practically hear his voice changing in every cut. <laughs> um, I think what we should do is maybe 59th Street Bridge song, Feeling Groovy. Oh, Simon because, and Garfunkel probably really, never happier than hearing their version really, done it, by a... Kid actor with no talent when it comes yeah. to singing. Yeah, if you want to feel groovy, stay with us, folks, because we're about to groovify your world. <laughs>